week on property management tips. I want to talk about the process in Las Vegas to do an eviction. So uh, the purpose of this video is to guide uh, viewers in the process of doing an eviction, filing what type of notices and what are the steps involved. I have written some notes so that I don't forget any of the of the steps of the steps. And so let me start out by saying um, some key points. Okay, so the most important is who can file the notices. So the notices need to be filed by the constable or sheriff, um, an attorney's agent, or a licensed processor. So you do not want to file these notices yourself. Not only it's the law, but um, you don't want to get to a hearing and find out that you have filed the wrong notices and you have filed them improperly and you have to start all over. Uh, an eviction can take anywhere from 15 days in a perfect world to 180 days and you don't want to start all over. Uh, types of notices. So we have a few types of notices and the most common ones are the notice to pay rent or quit and that is filed after the rent is late. In Las Vegas, you have a minimum of um, three days before the rent is late. So we cannot say that the rent is late until the fourth of the month and then it depends on what you have written in your contract. In our case, the rent will be late on the fourth of the month. Uh, typically, you file a seven day pay or quit. It used to be five days, it is seven days now. The notice to comply or quit. So those notices are used for the lease violations and things related to non-payment of rent. Uh, usually it's, those are five days. Uh, then we have the no cost eviction notices. These are usually for tenants that are month to month and they don't have to have a specific reason but it's usually takes a it's a usually called or known as a 30 day notice and these are used uh, for get providing notice at the end of a lease uh, that you need the property back or you want the tenant to vacate and that's one of the very common uh, reasons for filing a 30 day notice then we have the unlawful detainer this notice it's used uh, when other notices have been ignored such as um, the 30-day notice uh, have passed and the tenant is still in the property so now you will proceed to the unlawful detainer issuing the notices so here is where you would have the notice served to the tenant and it's very important to have proper documentation. That is why they have to be served by either the sheriff, the constable, sheriff, constable, uh, attorney's agent, or a licensed processor because either one of these services can provide proof of serving the notice properly in case you need to provide this proof during a hearing. The judge will receive the notices filed with the court, but you should also have a copy in your file when you're attending a hearing. The waiting period, it varies from notice to notice. On a seven day pay or quit, you would have to wait the seven judicial days, which means in the city of um, North Las Vegas and Henderson, the courts are not open on Fridays. So you do not count Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or a holiday. Um, and at this time, um, you also have uh, like the 30-day notice those are business days and uh, once you waited the proper time on the notice served 
you will proceed to filing an, an eviction claim or complaint. So what happens when you file a co eviction complaint, which is also known as a summary eviction? At this time, uh, you will be presenting your documentation to the court which it, if it is for a non-payment of rent, you need to provide a copy of your lease um, so that the judge can see uh, the rent amount and why are you requesting the funds that you are requesting from the tenant. Uh, also, it's very important to know that you, once you file the seven day pay or quit, you cannot refuse the rent during those seven days for not having the late fees or the or the eviction cost you need to be able to and be prepared to accept the rent during those seven days uh, once the notices have been issued and you obtain a hearing date you will attend a hearing uh, during the hearing, uh, you present your case, the tenant presents their case. Uh, the judge makes a, rule, a ruling, and at this time, he can rule in favor of the tenant or in favor of the landlord, or may request for both parties to return to the court if there was something that needed to be corrected. It's very important if the tenant is withholding rent due to habitability concerns, the tenant needs to be prepared to post the rent with the court so that their habitability issues can be heard. And uh, if the judge rules in favor of the landlord and grants the eviction, the next step it would be uh, processing the tenant out of the property and how do you do that is by um, going to the constable's office and paying the constable usually it's between 94 and 96 dollars plus two to four dollars per mile from the constable's office to the actual property the constable then uh, will post the proper notice letting the tenant know they will be locked out and that is usually known as 24-hour notice now keep in mind depending on how busy the constable's office is it may take a few days and not just 24 hours uh, once the notice has been posted a locksmith will meet the constable at the property you may be present if you would like to do that i personally don't recommend that and we can talk about it why and uh the locks are changed which at that point you will take possession of the property now keep in mind if there is personal items left in the property you have to store them for 30 days so that means either by inventory the personal items and moving them to a storage unit or holding them in the property you need to provide the tenant with the proper notice and how to schedule time to pick up their personal items before the 30 days expire and before you can dispose them or donate them it is very important that you do not help the process by making the property unhabitable and trying to push the tenant out of the property. So during the eviction process, it doesn't matter if you include utilities in your lease, you cannot turn off the utilities because you haven't received rent and you cannot enter the property um, because you are the landlord and you're going through an eviction process, you cannot change the locks. You have to file the, uh, the proper notices and complete the process uh, issued by the law 
uh, before you can change the locks. So it's very important to follow the law to avoid any consequences. Hopefully these tips have been helpful. If you need any additional support, we can recommend you legal counsel, or you may give us a call at 702-412-7189, or you may visit our website at lasvegasyourhome.com. And as always, Monarch Property Management is here for all your landlord property management needs. Thank you.